Here's a few ways you can support us at LICMC Radio. You can listen and spread the word. Tell others to listen to LICMC.net. You can support our ministries as well as our advertisers. You can support by buying your own radio spot or your own radio show for our affordable rates. Or you can donate through Cash App at London, that's L-O-N-D-E-N-W-A. That's L-O-N-D-E-N-W-A. You can cash up us for support or visit ldwcenterprise.weebly.com. Thank you for listening and thank you for your support. If you or someone you know is thinking about suicide, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. 1-800-273-8255. Common Ground, helping people move from crisis to hope. We're available 24-7, offering professional, compassionate mental health services. Call anytime at 800-231-1127. That's 800-231-1127. Common Ground, helping people move from crisis to hope. If you need a listening ear or someone to talk to, if you're emotional or going through something at this time, just give them a call anytime. It's Common Ground, 800-231-1127. That's 800-231-1127. The National Sexual Violence Resource, National Sexual Violence Resource Center. If you need assistance, you can call 800-655-4673. That's 800-656-4673. Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Hotline Network. You can call 800-656-HOPE. That's 800-656-4673. Information for survivors, family and friends, advocates and educators, as well as the media and press. Our mission, NSVRC, provides research and tools to advocates working on the front lines to end sexual harassment, assault, and abuse with the understanding that ending sexual violence also means ending racism, sexism, and all forms of oppression. Call 800-656-HOPE. That's 800-656-4673, the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. Legacy 31, founder Tia Payne. One of my goals as the founder of Legacy 31 is teaching and advocating on the importance of supporting the whole survivor. One way we do that here at Legacy 31 is taking into account the effects one's spiritual relationship has on their healing. Faith plays a crucial role for many survivors. That's where survivors will try and regain some sense of normalcy and healing as they work through the trauma they have experienced. By having more faith-oriented services for our survivors, we are being trauma-informed in our approach to their overall need for services, says founder Tia Payne. Listen at Legacy 31 is through education, advocacy, prevention, and community outreach. We'll work to make silenced voices of survivors heard. The need of a survivor to have a safe space to speak loudly and unapologetic while being supported as they continue to heal as God intended will be a reality through Legacy 31. You may send all donations to Cash App Legacy 31 25. That's dollar sign capital L E G A C Y 31 25. The rest of the letters are lowercase. The telephone number is 330 362 
3-3-0-3-6-2-9-5-2-7. Legacy 31. Well, amen. Thank God once again for a, a at the table crib this wonderful Thursday day. And thank God for just allowing us to be here in the land of living. We praise and worship Him and glorify Him and say, Hell, Louis, just thanking God for blessing us to wake up, see another day, and have our loved ones all around us. And things are going well. And we just praise and thank God for all that He's doing for us right now. We just thank God that we have Pastor Darlene. We got Dr. Mother Octavia all here with us as well. How are you doing, ladies? I am blessed and highly favored of, of God, and I'm enjoying Jesus, amen, and I'm enjoying being on your program, Pastor London. Amen. Thank you for being on our program. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> amen. Okay. And Pastor Darlene, uh, how are you doing? You can claim it. It's yours, too. <laughs> amen. Well, listen, I am blessed. I'm prosperous, I'm enjoying life, and I am too. Like Dr. Octavia, so happy and elated to be on this show, just too fired up to me. <laughs> Holy <laughs> God, I powerful women of God. And I, I just look forward uh, to this topic. It's a good, hot Holy Ghost topic. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Amen. yes. Amen. Yes. We thank God every day for all that He does for us, and I'm sure we. God gives us all many, many, many topics because as life goes on, we see all the things that God blesses us, blesses us to do. He bless, He conquers so many situations. He is victorious in so many situations. He's a healing God. He's a blessing God, yeah. a loving God, a caring God. And He's yeah. God and God all yeah. by Himself. And so, yeah, we thank God once again for blessing us to be here today. And the topic for today is Jesus said someone touched me your faith will make you whole Jesus said who touched me your faith will make you whole amen so a couple of chapters I just want to read out of before I turn it over to the to the doctors and the pastors um Luke 8 chapter 8 uh this 45 i just have the last sentence of that and it says who touched me amen that's a significant thing that jesus said when he was walking through that big crowd and he didn't say y'all touched me he said who touched me that, that goes to show us just one out of a zillion billion zillion well, you touch jesus christ he gonna feel you that yeah, one amen. that amen. one that touched him and it says, and Jesus said, who touched me? For I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. When the woman was so sincere about getting to the Lord, the woman with the issue of blood, she touched him. She did everything she could to touch it. Let me finish. Let me get to the scripture. <laughs> Section 47. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. 48, and he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. And that's the two things. Jesus uh, said, who touched me? And then he told her, your faith has made you whole. And and that all this is a, signifies that there's a part that we all have in the situation of healing or whatever it is that we are needing from God through Jesus Christ. If she pressed through that crowd, that means we cannot give up. Her faith was so strong, she wasn't letting anybody so we can imagine she had the issue of blood. We don't know if she walking across, whatever she done. He, she touched, touched the hem of his garden. So it sounded like she was, she might have been kind of down, kind of low for him to just touch the hem of the garment down there. And he said, 
uh, when he saw the one, he said that uh, the virtue has gone out of him. She she touched him so strong that she, uh, the, she pulled that healing right out of Jesus Christ. But she was sincere because of what she was trying to do. She had all faith. She wasn't giving up. She said, I'm getting through this crowd. If I got to crawl, if I got, I don't care what I got to do, I'm getting to that man named Jesus. I mean, she didn't have to talk or anything. She just, she didn't touch his leg. She touched him of his garment. And all the, he felt that woman touch him. So this is, this is, shows us that, and it says, your faith has made you whole. Our faith in God through Jesus Christ can make us whole. He said, he said she was whole. Go in peace. He said, be comfortable. <laughs> He said, "You, you said, be of good comfort. You're, you're in a good situation now, and the faith that you had made you whole and told her to go in peace. So it's just this, this just is a reminder of our faith of having no doubt, That's no matter right. what comes in the way, no matter what it looks like. You know, even even if your physical mind, you know, God is just giving. We we still we're still human." But that spiritual part of us is what God gives us to be. If once you decide to make Jesus your choice, that's the spirit of God that he, do. he puts in us is what is drives us through the situation. So even when your 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 carnal mind, your flesh, your emotions uh, see some things like, oh my God, oh my God. But the spirit of God in you is going to help you to drive to that point where you need to be, it's going to help your faith to continue to rise because your spirit, you have the spirit of God and you know, you know that God can do it. So that's the spirituality of what we have when we obtain, you know, the spirit of God in us. And it's just the faith of knowing. You you don't even have to be, have been gotten, you could be just now coming to Christ. Which your, your faith can be that strong right now. It's just like, I don't know what to say. We don't know this woman, but we know this woman knew that she was going, she was getting to Jesus. And that's the kind of drive that we have to have, that we got to know that Jesus is going to take care of business. Jesus is going to take care of it. Jesus is going to heal you. Jesus is going to bless you. Jesus is going to bring you out. Jesus is going to uh, touch the situation and turn it around. And like, you know, and Jesus will make the devil a liar. That's why you hear them saying, the devil is a liar. Jesus will make the the devil is a liar. Number one, every breath and thing he's breathed is a lie. And so when Jesus comes, he just so proves that. So whatever the enemy even set in your way, we can use this whole situation for anything, any situation in our life, even for our loved ones. If you are a child of God and you pray to Him, He's hearing your prayers, and He says, "Pray with all pray with all prayer and supplication." You could be praying for your son, your daughter, your grandchildren, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, yourself. You can be praying for some saints that you know, your your friends. You can be praying for somebody that don't even know God that might walk up to you and you say a prayer with them. But and they say they God in you. If they feel God in you, can you imagine that? Just like that woman went up to Jesus. Amen. He said the virtue went out of him, then healed that woman. So we are right. we are God's lights. We are the light of Jesus. The, yeah. We are the little lights. So that spirit right. of God is in us. And so we represent God. We represent Jesus. We represent the Holy Ghost. And if somebody that comes up to you and and if they 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 are touched by the spirit of God in you. And you speak to them about becoming a child of God and they become a believer. The Bible said they shall be saved. This scripture goes so many different ways. So many different ways. Like every which way you would think. For the healing of your body. For the healing of your mind. For the blessing of the situation. To turn the situation around. To bind and rebuke Satan in Jesus' name. To bless somebody else with a touch of God through you, touch with somebody else, with the word of God, or even just a touch, or the very presence that maybe you have stepped into a place and you didn't even open your mouth, but the presence of God is on you, in you, that it changes up the whole atmosphere. 
Right. When people turn around and look. You you know it and they know it. Don't nobody got to say a word, but they know something. A light just came on in here. Something just came in here, and it must be Jesus. In Amen. each and every one of us. So just to encourage people, no matter what we are, any one of us may be going through at this time. Our faith is will help deliver us. First of all, we have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, first and foremost. And you can't doubt God, because it says you can doubt him, you can forget it. No doubt. No doubt. So we have to be like little babies, like little children. What do they do? They 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 rely on their mom. They rely on their daddy. They rely on help while they're growing and being fed and whatever they need. Even until they get a certain age, you still rely on your people to rely on God like that. If we can if we can rely on my mother, or you rely on yourself to get the word, you got all the faith in the word. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it to my job. But we need to have all the faith in Jesus and that whatever needs to be done shall be done. You know, some people equate that to being a Christian, doing the work of the Lord, and and suddenly becoming lazy, <laughs> lazy and God, too lazy to think about him, too lazy to say a prayer. I pray sometimes, too lazy to read the word. But when it's time to go pick up that check, oh, you're going to jump up. You're going to be like a road runner and go get that check. But that's how God wants us. And no, it's not wrong with that. But God, God wants us to have that kind of knowing about him, that kind of faith about him, that kind of faith in him, so that he can, he can bring you through, bring you out, and you're going to know it. And that's going to cut down a lot of stress. It's going to cut down a lot of confusion. It's going to cut down a lot of frustration, cut down a lot of anger, and cut, cut down all the doubt, no doubt. Because you know that God is going to come through there. And when you pray to Jesus in the name of Jesus, it shall yeah. be done. It's done. So that's who never lies. So we have to get ourselves to the point where we believe. He's, he's asked us, can you just believe it? Before you go to even to know it, can, can, you, can you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Can you have the faith of a mustard seed? Can you trust God? Can you trust in Jesus? We have so many other things out in here in the world, in the air that's wavering, that's not talking about Jesus. We we did something like this a couple weeks ago of ones that think in of different other ways, all but Jesus. Uh -huh. Then people come up with ideas. Next thing you know, you got the blind leading the blind. That's right. Somebody get a good yeah. idea. Everybody jump on the wagon, and they don't even. They don't. Right. Jesus not on the wagon. <laughs> you just follow somebody because they sound good. They came up with this good idea. God said, "Don't serve any other gods." The Bible means you can't mix no other gods with God. Now, some people try to have it all. They keep saying, "I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm talk about God, but I'm gonna talk about this too." Nope. God is the only way. So this is what he wants us to do, is not lean to our own understanding. He wants us to be humble. And he wants us to believe, like he said in John 3, 16. He said, do you believe it? Just say, I believe it. Trust him, believe it, go ahead. You take chances all other kind of ways. This is sometimes I don't understand. People will take chances doing the most detrimental thing that's just not good. They're going to take a chance, I'm going to take a chance. Well, why don't you take a chance on Jesus? Because that is not going to hurt you. <laughs> and that's going to lead you out of the situation. That's going to that's gonna be a life-changing move that you would make if you would go to Jesus and just believe. Just believe. That's right. And, he, and we call it a chance. You know, the scripture said don't even take chances. He don't even like us going out there and taking chances. Okay, I'm going to take a chance on this. He, see what happens. No, he already told us not to do it. But we're just saying, if you can take chances on all these other things and other ideas and 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 trying stuff out to see what's going to happen, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. It's going to be a very bad idea. If you can, if you can take a time to to do this and conjure up stuff on your own, why not take time to believe in Jesus? And once you step over that threshold, and you'll be in a whole other realm. And then that's when. 
the kingdom of God is going to open up to you, your spirit, uh -huh. your mind, and your body. Amen? Uh -huh. And then your faith will grow. He said just the faith of a mustard seed. He's not even asking for a lot. That's the power of God. In other words, he said you don't you don't need the you don't need the whole 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 bushel of seeds. Just one faith. And you know, seed is so small, it's like a dot. Next mustard seed. That's now if you got that much, and just that seed is gonna grow though. You plant that mustard seed, it's gonna grow. Who is that, Dr. Artemi saying? It grows all over the place. It yeah, just extends, yeah. it goes. <laughs> It, it goes so far, it starts other things growing. And that's the faith he told us that we need to have. So we're just encouraging people right now. Some people might be feeling down, feeling sad, you know. And my condolences for everybody that might have even lost some loved ones. I'm just hearing so much of that this week, last week, this week, and even in my own family. And so we just, we need, folks, we need God. The condition of this world... The more, the more I see, the longer we live and the more that we see how this world is changing, evolving, and coming out. Put like this. A lot of things have been, been going on in the dark. It's just it's come out. It came out. It's out. It used to be to the point where people say, I, I know this is not right or this, this is this and that, but we're going to keep this undercover because now things, the cover is off. So many things. Now, for the fear of things, the cover didn't come off. It's much worse than a lot of things that you already see. So that's enough for us to want to say, look, I want to stay under the cover of the feathers of wings of, of the God. <laughs> that's where I want to be. So when things keep jumping off, doing what they do out in the world, we say you will be in the world, but not of the world. Right. No harm will come near, near you at all. You'll see it. You every, your everyday life is to keep right on going. God gonna keep on blessing you. Gonna keep on moving. You gonna he gonna keep on blessing you. He gonna keep touching you, healing you. He's gonna keep raising you up to another standard from one level to the next. He's still gonna keep blessing your faith to grow. That's right. Now to see that, so it's like being here. That's why I said we in God's world, in the in the world. So if you in with God and you in this world, you 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 not it. You not of this. That's so right. you can walk right past it. It can fly right by you, fly right over your head. And guess what? Mm -hmm. God's got you covered up so tough, it, it won't touch you. He's not going to let it. So we, we're talking about the power of God and the reason why that we need to continue to depend on him. We're talking to the saints for encouragement. Saints need encouraging too, all the time. Amen. Because things... When you're a saint, you then you can discern so many things, and so many things do happen. And also, we know that we we can pray about it, and God can change it. And some things we cannot physically do anything about it. We don't we don't have physical power, but God has a spiritual power. He has the power to do any and all things that we need. So this is another reason why we need God, because He'll protect us from all these things. He'll even bless your loved ones that He haven't even. Turn to Christ yet. Uh -huh. Just because right. of you. Right. Really, the scripture talks about that. It says that one, if one person in that bloodline of that generation it is a true believer, a child of God, he says that spiritual power and blessing goes across the world, he says, to uh, to your kinfolk you don't even know. All across the world. That's like, probably, they don't even know you. To know you, but that power of God is in that bloodline. One person. We talking about a real saint. Now we're not talking about. We ain't talking about a player, player in the uh, straddle the fence. No, we are talking about somebody that's sincere in the heart, that loves God, and then those prayers, like that scripture says, the prayer, the prayers of the righteous are available much. Is it true? Fervent prayers are effective, effectual, and it blesses all those surrounding. If they ever come to Christ, and if you if you keep speaking Christ and they keep seeing Christ, don't give up. Don't give up on them. No. They might not look like it, but I tell you what, if you have God in you and they keep hearing about God, and they keep seeing God, I guarantee you it's going in there. And if they don't want to hear it, they heard it. <laughs> so you know what? Once it's, once they heard it, they can't close their ears up and throw it out. Nope, it's in there. That's right. Amen. 
that. So the word, once that word of God and the, and the spirituality of, of you or whoever has gotten it, it's going in to their memory. And it'll be retrieved at the right time. Might not, we want, like, man, you need, to, you need to hurry up and get God. What's taking you so long? What's taking you so long? Meanwhile, you know, you praying, got you praying. <laughs> you praying to God, please protect me. God, so and so and so. And you see God protecting them in the middle of the stuff. So that's the power of God through his people. But God loves you, Christian person, so much that when you pray, he's listening. A lot of the children that people have and different uh, relatives and situations, because they are true Christians of God and because of those prayers, God has, he's covering some situation that could be really a disaster, for real. I mean, yeah. seriously, they're disastrous. And sometimes someone could be in a disaster and because of those prayers from your heart to God, he is covering. That's the power of God. That's the faith That's in awesome. God. And once you become a child of God, your faith is is, is going to be there. Amen. It's just going to be there, and it's going to grow. So I'm going to stop now, and I'm going to give this back over. I'm going to give this over to Dr. Octavia. And Pastor Dr. I know you got some, some good word for us about this topic. Praise God. Praise God. Well, Pastor London, you, you had a good word. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm just encouraged. I'm encouraged uh, about about this, this topic. Amen. And what you were saying, you know, it, it's, uh, it's simply beautiful. <clears throat> Jesus said, who touched me? And yeah. your faith will make you whole. Amen. You know, and I was looking at that. Uh, you know, to be made whole, it means to uh, he restores uh, anyone to a sound, healthy, and favorable condition. Amen. I mean, he, just, he does it all. And, you know, and we know that nothing and no one except God has the power to complete us as a person. Amen. And, you know, with this topic and what we're talking about, uh, Pastor London, you know, I'm standing on God's word. What he's saying in these scriptures, amen. Because uh, I haven't read this before, oh, oh, for a week now. But, you know, uh, uh, God is able, and I know it, and I have the faith, amen. And we know that nothing and no one except God has the power, amen, to heal me, amen. And, uh, and I know I thank God for that. And in, in Psalm 73 and 26, it says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. Uh, and also, uh, it's in, in that thy faith has made me, me whole. In, in the King James uh, Version, records. Thy faith has made me whole, and or thy faith has saved me seven times in the uh, King James uh, Version of the Bible. And in the New King James and the New Living Translation, it your faith has made you well, or your faith has saved you. Amen. And as you were saying, uh, Pastor London, you know, you know, to be in healing and being saved by our Lord and Savior, Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. And no one can do that but him because he is our Father, he's our, our sovereign God. Amen. And, um, you know, just I had looked at the Amplified Bible uh, about uh, Jesus and the woman that he healed in Matthew 9, 22, and the Amplified Bible says, but Jesus turning and saying, first said, take courage, daughter. Your personal trust and confident faith in me has made you well. And at once, the woman was completely healed. You know, and as I was, you know, listening to you, Pastor London, and reading these scriptures, amen, the key word is faith. Amen. It's all about the faith. Yes, we have in our Lord and Savior, and about the faith we have in the promises that He has made.
made unto us. So, you know, we have to, you know, we have to have faith. And, uh, you know, it says also in Matthew 8 that when he speaks a single word, he heals. Whatever the situation may be, they don't, mess, they don't really have to be a physical. It could be a, a another a situation maybe in your home or in, when, in your kids or down the street or whatever. When he speaks, he heals. And, you know, I also looked at uh, what does that faith have made me hold me. The Lord promises that he has faith in me to be healed and is not a, and shall be healed. Faith in the Lord. Jesus includes trusting him completely and submitting ourselves properly to his will. What does it mean? By his womb, we are healed. In Isaiah 53 and 5, we are healed, are in the past tense and meaning that our healing has been fully secured on the cross by Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. And that's that just for me. <laughs> it's just the whole, uh, that feels it. Amen. I, I thank God for this. I thank God for you, Pastor London, and for that uh, who touched it. Amen. Mm. And, you know. Only, the only person that can touch you is the Lord, and he can touch Amen. other people, like you were saying, through us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we have the, uh, he has given us the authority to do that Amen. in his name, yes. and that we can lay hands, and the sick shall recover. And I thank God for that, and I thank God for you, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor London, and for Pastor Darlene. Thank Amen. you. Amen. We thank God for you, too, uh, Dr. Octavia. And I like that she said he gave us authority, and he gave us the power. Power is, is, right. is more mag magnified than the authority, but he gave us both of those. That's right. And, and it can permeate the whole situation and change yeah. up everything. And while you're sitting there looking, and you're watching right before your eyes... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you do stuff when you're not looking. But I've seen God just do things. I'm sure y'all seen it. Wow, God just came in there. I don't want to be no place else but, but up under God. That's it. Bottom line, I don't want to be nowhere else. We're going to turn the rest of it over to the pastor. Dr. Octavia, thank you for the beautiful teachings Praise again God. about uh, our faith. That's right. And like you said, 2,000 years ago, you you went all, that's how long? Amen. <laughs> And it's not. And he said when he came, it wasn't going to change. He said he's, he was then, he's now, and forever. That means that's right. when anybody Amen. wants to say, well, that was old and back, and no, that's today. You know, some people will pull that pull that card. Well, that was back in the Bible days. Yep. Oh, but no, a, no. but the Bible days is right now. Look at it. Read it. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the Bible days. It don't change. Amen. Amen. And, and to know that he never changes either. Amen. No. Mighty, powerful God. I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Darlene. Well, listen, women of God. Oh, my God. You both. Hey, I'm sitting here eating, taking notes. You have been such a blessing, as always. Amen. You mm -hmm. have not only baked the cake, but has always set the table with double entrees, double dessert, double bread. Maybe I'll pat it on you this <laughs> Cherries on the cake and yes. and uh, squeeze a little spot in on the table. But no, you all, as always, and London, you always pick the most precious, wonderful topic. Amen. And like Dr. Tavis said, well, what are you saying? To keep not only, oh, you said it, London, not only help the people that's on the fence, but strong believers. Keep, you know, we have to keep eating. We have to keep feeding our faith. Yeah. And that's right. London, that's right. Love what you said that uh, he's a loving, caring God, and her touch was strong and sincere. Hey, Amen. Amen. And then Dr. Octavia, she came out, took, took a take, she took the baton. She said, We already healed. Only God can touch us. Amen. <laughs> what? Amen. Amen. I love that. Amen. Yeah, I'll give it back. 
Amen. But I love this topic. Jesus said, who touched me? Your faith will make you whole. Yeah. Now, Amen. you all have, I mean, you thoroughly covered this. So, um, but when you think about a touch, you think about a personal contact that can be felt. Right. So I'm going to, in the Amplified, I'm going to Luke 8, 43. Mm-hmm. And it says that a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. Now, in our day and age, we know that she was either um, just like heavy, you know, menstrual bleeding, but continuously, either it was hemorrhaging or it could have been uh, in this day and age, sometimes women are going to fight from weight because we find that in Jesus' name. They will have constant bleeding. That's very uncontrollable. So the Bible doesn't really get into what the issue was. But the thing about it, it was an issue. Which, now you think right. about it, everybody has some issue. That's right. It may not be to this extent. It may be worse. It could be light. But everybody got some issue. You know, something that they're dealing with or believing God for. Because we're going to always need God. Absolutely. That's right. Every single day. You make one mountain and it's like, oh, well, that's it. No. You know, because that's called life. But anyway, let's get let's get back to our, our text. When you think about uh, a touch, of course, a personal contact that can be felt. And the woman she had suffered, back to Luke 8, 43. And a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years. Years. Yes. Now that's a long time. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. But it must be something about that number 12 because God had, Jesus had 12 disciples. And now this is my own life. I have been a pastor for 12 years. I don't know what it is about that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, she had suffered for 12 years and has spent all her living upon position. Not like she was sitting around. You know, being a lazy bone, well, you know, I, it is what it is. No, she tried to get her you. You know, and it's nothing right. wrong with going to doctors. I'll tell people that, you know, even Jesus said, they that are whole, you don't need a doctor. It's a blessing when you whole and you don't have to go to a doctor. Mm-hmm. But he said, right. I'm sick. Go to a doctor. Look what's a doctor. Amen. So, yeah. she spent all of her living. So that meant, you know, similar to today, you know, people have to get treatments and things. It can be very expensive. Now, you know, thank God for insurance in this day and age. But the way that some of these insurance programs are, people still have to pay a little something extra. Mm -hmm. That's right. But who knows? Maybe they didn't have that type of plan back there. Maybe they did or did not. But it just says she spent all her living upon position. So in other words, she had her trust in doctors. She right. tried everything that she possibly could try. And I know when I was little, my mother taught me that man's, men's extremity, that means you do all that you can do. Mm-hmm. That becomes God's opportunity. Right. So she tried it. She tried it her way. She tried the society way. I'm sure her friends can, girl, go to Dr. Such and such. Oh, yeah. He's a specialist with that. So she kept on going. 12 years. That's a lot. Amen. And she could not be healed by anyone. And you see, things are very similar nowadays. You know, doctors, and they have to do what they know to do. They've been right. trained, they trained in the, the a law of science. You know, and they'll say, well, there's no cure or this or that. But with God, hey, horrible shot. With God, all things are possible. Right. Amen. Amen. And Amen. so she couldn't be healed by anyone. So verse, and I want to bring in Psalm 103. Our benefits. It says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that's within me, bless his holy name. Forget not his benefits. As children of God, Yes, we have natural doctors and things, and it's fine. Of course, right. pray confident and be led of the Lord. Because God can heal. He can heal through doctors. He can heal That's through right. 
wound remedy. Mm-hmm. But he yeah. also, let's not dilute the fact he can't heal supernaturally. Right. And so in Psalm 103, the benefits are, first of all, he forgives. See, mm-hmm. you can't have a sin-sick soul and think it's not going to affect you physically because it will. To have forgiveness is not optional. Forgiving yourself is not optional. Forgiving others is not optional. And you being forgiven is not optional. That's where the healing starts. If you hold uh, bitterness and hate and wrath, unforgiveness in your heart, it can't affect you physically. You know, it's amazing how the world will say stuff and then people go, oh, wow. But the word of God has been telling us all these things all along. Yes. Science has proven that hatred held in your heart, unforgiveness yes. held in your heart, bitterness held in your heart can turn into physical ailment. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That's why the Lord, he knew what he was saying. He forgives all of our diseases or diseases, but then he said he heals all of our, he heals all of our diseases or diseases. He forgives us first, then he heals us. And then he redeems our life from destruction. So whatever it is, the enemy has sent is not going to destroy you because God has redeemed you. And then he calls him with tender mercies and loving kindness. Sometimes we just need pure mercy. That's we right. Need pure kindness. We need pure grace. And then, of course, he renews our youth. Amen. He did that benefit. But anyway, back to this uh, Luke 8. So verse 44 says, She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. Get him in the Amplified. As soon as she touched him, in verse 44, it says, immediately. Immediately. Not not ten weeks, not a month, but immediately a mm-hmm. flow of blood ceased. Now this is showing you God can heal instantly. That's right. Minute. That's right. We believe. See, sometimes it may take something for people's faith to get in line. If it means sometimes they they have to go to the doctor. And let me tell you all something. Let me just put a little check here. I'm gonna get back to this. Scripture. It's amazing <laughs> how, and I know in my younger days, say if you have, you know, symptoms of a cold or flu, of course we find colds and flu, but somebody like was lingering, you felt like, okay, the over counter stuff is not helping. Let, let me go to the doctor. And it's amazing. You go to the doctor, doctors say, oh, it's just so a regular cold. And this type, giving you an antibiotic won't do you any good. But just go home, take a lot of flu. <laughs> you know, oh, back then they say, take your aspirin, take right. a lot of flu, and you'll be fine. Now, the doctor has done absolutely nothing. But don't you feel bad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was back in my little early days before my faith was on this level. But you feel, oh, thank you, doctor. You know what? I feel so much better. Why? Why are you going to feel better? He didn't give you anything. He just told you to do what you were already doing. But it's something about sometimes going to the doctor's office. It's like, right. how much better do we have to get our faith up to mm-hmm. the level of going to the doctor's yeah. office? But I, the Lord just gave you that friend. And that's what you did me down. So it says in 44, she came up behind him, touched the fringe or the hem of his garment, immediately her flow of blood sees. And in some of the text, it said, she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, right. I'm going to be made whole. She knew to speak faith. And that's what we have to speak faith. James, the book of James said, don't be double-minded. You can't at one point, oh, I'm so sick. Or my blank is just, at, don't claim no sickness and don't claim it for yourself. No. Okay, if you're dealing with arthritis, don't say, well, my arthritis, not mine, that don't come this way, arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> don't 
to train the young people. So many times they say, well, my anxiety. I said, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. It's not yours. Of course, I'm dying anxiety coming this way. You know, because spirits are real. That's why yeah. people say, I'll just jump. No, spirits are real. You send stuff right. up, they'll try to make a U-turn and come back. No, don't come this way. But you're going to get doubts in the blood of Jesus. Okay. Now, <laughs> so she said, I know if I just touch the hem of his God, I'm going to be made home. So we have to have faith talk. Amen. Verse 45, Jesus said, who is it? You know, she touched him, and she, she got healed. Right, and then Jesus right. said, who is it who touched me? When all who were denying it, you know, people around, they probably getting their healing too. But they, I don't know why they was afraid. Well, I didn't touch you. I didn't, I didn't do it. And like, you know, Dr. Tate and London both brought, brought up. He was, it was probably, it was probably thousands and a multitude. And a whole bunch of folks was touching him. But London was saying this lady was humble. She was on the ground. And you know what? It's so much that's out of this scripture. She didn't care. What people thought about That's her. Right. They probably said, look at that old name, see, stinking. I'm just, you know, paraphrasing. I do that. They probably said, look at that old uh, old blood bastard. Because some people knew her issue and poking fun. That's why you got to be careful. Don't tell anybody what you're going through. Don't do it. They not, Especially if it's an unbeliever, they're not going gonna to stand in the gap with you and for you. Mm -hmm. They probably said, look at that old dirty, nasty woman. Ugh, crawling all around. That's right. You belong on the ground. She did not care. And when you get to a certain place in the Lord, you don't care what people think. Oh, look at them. Every week, cut on a table of prayer, talking about Jesus. Oh, <laughs> God, why don't they blah, 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 blah. What's going to be the next? You know, you just have people that just unbelievers. They just don't believe. And you pray for them, but you keep your faith up, leveled up, and keep moving. So Jesus um, said, wait a minute, somebody touch me. When all were denying it, Peter and all those who were with him said, Master. Now, see, they got in the natural. Jesus. <laughs> they probably said, are you okay? It's thousands of people out. Lord, do you see these folks? It's hundreds touching you. How are you going to say who touched me? See, they were in the natural. Mm -hmm. See, there's a kind mind. There's a kingdom mind. We are kingdom minded. We don't think like the world thinks. And so Peter said, those who were with him and those that were with him said, Master, the multitudes surround you and press you on every side. And they didn't have to really be minded because this is God. They don't have to tell people what they think you can't see. And that was the devil to make you think God's not hearing you. God right. does see you. God's not seeing you. God does see you. Amen. But we just have to trust and allow him to work out things in his own way, in his own time. But Jesus said, Jesus was so cool. He, he, didn't, he didn't get into arguments. He just, he knew how to answer. But he said, you know, someone did touch me. Someone. For I perceived that healing power has gone forth from me. He didn't say, oh, do you think I don't know a lot of people out here? I don't, don't you? What you calling me, Doug? Yeah, some people just go hog wild. You say one little thing, and they go off the cliff. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. He just simply said, I perceive, no, somebody did touch me. But in other words, it was a different touch. Mm -hmm. It was a you, you touched me. You believed me. You believed that I'm God. You believed that I can change your situation. You believed, you didn't have doubt. He said, no, somebody did touch me hallelujah for i perceive that healing power has gone forth for me you know and i'm gonna put a little pause button there too because i got a couple more and i know you ladies know sometimes you minister and you feel drained in the natural after that's because people have been drawing from mm -hmm. your tank mm -hmm. you say, oh, i right. minister Woo, right. i need some extra sleep the next day Mm -hmm. I, I feel just, wow, Lord, give me extra strength. That's because somebody's touched and they believed. They, they they believe in the virtue, your oil tank. That's why we have to keep our oil tank filled up in the Lord. Because people are being blessed. People are receiving. Whether they're here today or they come back later, 
God, God has who He wants to be blessed by this ministry. He, he know how to. He knows how to have uh, have the folks come. Thank God for these social media. They can come back a year from now. The same anointing gonna be there. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, they are so blessed, so healed, so encouraged, so enlisted. And many times people say, "Oh, I'm just scrolling." Well, I was just changing the dial, and I happened to see this show on your show. Yeah, it happened that Jesus had a appointment for you. <laughs> hey, man, the Holy Ghost is so deep in this place. Oh, my God. I'm going to hurry up, London. I'm going to get into something. <laughs> see, it's your fault. You're the one, <laughs> you're the one that yields everything. You come up with these hot Holy Ghost <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm oh my God. Amen. <laughs> and 47 said, and when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, notice that God knows when any of us are sincerely praying. That's right. He knows when we're sincerely praising. He knows when we're sincerely believing. It's not going unnoticed by God. And men and women will not always give you accolades. Especially the world, because the world hated Jesus. So what makes you think if Jesus died of you, they're going to just embrace you? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or me. But, right. you know, and we are, for, listen, for the record, we are not thirsty for knowledge from anybody but Jesus, but we thank you when you do notice us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I said, when the woman mm-hmm. noticed, she had not escaped notice. She came up trembling and falling down before him. She declared in the presence of all the people for what reason she had touched him. Mm-hmm. So she said, wait, let me get, get this. I touched him because I knew he could heal me. I knew the very moment that I touched this man. I know this is God. I know this is God dwelling among us. You know, I'm just kind of, you know, imagine what she's saying. I know that the minute I touched him, I mean the second that I touched him, I was in the heart. And she had been instantly cured. And he said to her daughter, your faith. And then I love to amplify it in parentheses and say, your confidence, your trust in me has made you well. He said, go, enter into peace, untroubled, undisturbed, well-being. And that's when you keep your mind on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 26 and 3 said, he will keep you in what? Perfect peace. But it's conditional. You know, whose mind is stayed on Jesus because you trust in Jehovah. So, London, here, let the girl take this for time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I'll be going some more with this opposite. Amen. <laughs> oh, here's a beautiful topic. Amen. It's, it, just listening to it, it makes you can feel your, your mind and your building up your faith, you know. You, go, right. you know you're going in the right direction. So I thank both of you so much for just spreading that word of God. Y'all, y'all, both of y'all like y'all keep the fire burning. <laughs> I might light it, but y'all, y'all keep it burning. So <laughs> I thank God for for your, your teaching and God using you today once again. And uh, at this time, we're gonna turn this over to uh, Dr. Octavia. If we end this in about a minute. Our system will allow me to to go send this live uh, on the platforms. So I guess Dr. Pastor, Pastor Darlene, will she? <laughs> well, yeah, two minutes. If she could uh, do the invitation to Christ, we may not make it. Uh, we'll still okay, got to do the invitation make, to Christ. I'm gonna make it quick, quick and short. Okay. So, according to Romans ten and nine, it says, "If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that raised him from the dead, you shall be saved." So let's pray this prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross just for me. He died on the cross just for me. He died on the cross just for me. Man, they put him in the grave.
grave, but he's no longer there. Put him in the grave, and he's, he's no longer grave, there. He's no longer there. He is alive. He is alive. He's alive. Come into my heart, save me. Come into my heart, save me. Give me of all my sins. Give me all my sins. Be my Lord, my Savior, my Master. Be my Lord, my Savior, my, my Master. Lord, my Savior, my Master. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for hearing Thank my you prayer. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I'm born again, and my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. 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 So we ended it now, folks. So we're going to play this again. I'll let you know.